When we start out in landscape photography, we're often told you should shoot in landscape orientation, which is holding the camera this way. And we should only shoot portrait orientation for portrait photography, which is photographing people. But is that really the case? Or can you shoot both in landscape and in portrait orientation when we're taking landscape images? This is what we're going to discuss today. Now when I take photos of landscape images, before I choose on the composition, whether it's landscape or portrait, I look at my subject and I think, is this going to be better described in landscape or in portrait orientation? Because picture tells a story. When we're taking a video, we can articulate what we're trying to tell the audience. It's very easy on a video, but in a photo, you've got one hit. If your composition is wrong and it doesn't really tell the story. People will be let down. They'll just go, yep, pass. When I take an image, I think about, okay, which is going to display the story that I want to tell behind this photo? Is it better represented in landscape or is it better represented in portrait? And this is the crucial part because you could have the best sunset or the best scenery in front of you. But if you choose the wrong orientation, everything will go flat. I've got some sample images here that I've taken over the years, both in landscape and in portrait orientation. And I will explain to you which work best in landscape, which work best in portrait. Most of the time when I'm out, I try to shoot both landscape and portrait. You'll very rarely see that in my social media posts because I like displaying the best image. So you might see a photo taken in portrait orientation and go like, wow, what would have looked like in landscape? Let let me tell you that if I displayed the portrait orientation on my social media, it was because that was the best orientation for that photo. So let's take a look at the photos now that work best in landscape orientation first. So these images were taken in Tasmania last September while we were traveling for about a week. And this was a very narrow canyon. I looked at this before I put the camera on the tripod in landscape and in portrait. And I decided that landscape worked best. Take a look at the portrait image. Can you see that although we can see the waterfall, look at the path. I've cut the path in half and the viewer is going to be left thinking like, what's on the left hand side here? How can I describe how tight this little canyon that led to this waterfall was? I can't because all the viewer is seeing is just half. I could say in the description, this was a very tight canyon, but people are going to be thinking like, Charles, what is really so tight about? You're not showing anything on the left. For all intended purposes, there could be like 20, 30 meters to the left here. But in landscape, you can very well see that it is a very narrow path leading to the waterfall. This second image here, a beautiful reverse sunset at Lake Somerset. And I saw this big tree, clouds were just streaking behind it and it looked great. But at the same time, I thought like, well, what about if I just isolate this tree here and just frame the tree with some clouds around it? And here again, the portrait orientation fell flat. Not so much because of the tree, but because of the clouds. I'm losing all those dynamic clouds around. I could describe this in a poster saying, I went out to Lake Somerset, the reverse sunset was amazing. The clouds were just pink, just streaking across the sky behind this tree. And people are gonna say, well, where are the clouds? You're just showing us just a small portion. This shows that landscape is best in these two scenarios. Now let's reverse the tables and I'll show you where portrait orientations, even in landscape photography, works best. And this monument is in Emu Park and this is called the Singing Ship. It's called the Singing Ship because the big flutes that you see that looks like the mask of this sailing ship. And when there's a lot of wind, it sings. That's why they call it the Singing Ship. Wind comes through and it makes a beautiful sound. There was a bit of stuff around the side and I said, this would look perfect in portrait orientation. Why? Because I just wanted to isolate my subject. I didn't want just a bland background around where my subject would get lost. So I took it in portrait orientation. But then I thought like, am I second guessing myself? Like, is it really the best way? I turned the camera around and took it in landscape orientation. Here, landscape orientation is flat because 
there's just a lot of nothing around. This is what you've got to think about. Not only think about the story that you want the image to tell, but also look at the surrounding around your subject. Is it boring or does it add to your subject? This is also a big part of it. Because if it doesn't add to your subject, you should just say like, no, nah, I'm gonna shoot in portrait because this is the best way for it. So you can see portrait or landscape. Now here's the next example of where portrait orientation worked best. This sunset image was taken in Thailand around Christmas in 2013. And I spent a couple of days there photographing around this area. And as the evening fell, there was a bit of smog around and the sun was reflecting thing on this little channel here. And these dead trees were just reflecting in the channel here. And I looked at this and go like, yeah, I'll shoot it in landscape. And I took a couple of photos, different compositions in landscape. But before I left, I really looked at it and think, I'm going to hedge my bets here. And I'm going to take the photos in portrait orientation. And I'm glad I did. Same position, but I photographed it in portrait orientation. Sure, I'm missing out a little bit on the side here of the old temples and all that. But the tree here reflecting in the water was just magical and I was so pleased that I'd taken because I would have been kicking myself. I never would have realized that I'd missed this perfect shot because I'd only based myself, well, landscape is best. It looks best in landscape. I'll shoot it in landscape. But in actual fact, portrait worked best for this image here. Two sets of images is to show you that sometimes whether you shoot in landscape or whether you shoot in portrait they're going to be a winner they're going to be great because your subject and your foreground work perfectly whether in landscape or whether in portrait look at this tree here this is in landscape orientation now look at it in portrait orientation both work great did you notice that i've put the tree in the center why? Because the tree is very close to symmetrical. So it fits in very well. Look at the foreground. Look at all these little rocks. Whether it's in landscape or whether in portrait, they work perfectly. Now this is the famous Lake Weber tree. It is around an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes away from where I live. This is the first time that I photographed this tree in daylight. I normally go there to photograph the Milky Way. You can see the Milky Way is rising above it. When I got there on this morning, the sun was shining and it was beautiful. And I go like, well, I'm going to take it in portrait orientation because this is the way that I photograph this tree all the time. And what makes this tree so nice is that it's leaning into this lake and the roots are just spreading out so it looks great in portrait but i'm going to photograph in landscape too because when i shoot the milky way i don't shoot it in landscape because the milky way just rises so high in the sky and look at it in landscape orientation it also works great so whether i'd taken it in portrait or in landscape both of these would have looked great as you can see in landscape photography you don't need to shoot in landscape orientation all the time sometimes shooting in portrait orientation works best it all depends on the story that you want to tell it all depends on your subject is your subject going to be best represented in landscape or in portrait so thanks for watching if you liked the video give it a big thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do i'm nearly at the 10,000 mark which will be a great achievement for me if you have any comment or feedback, leave it in the comments below. I'll answer your question. So stay safe and I will see you next time.